Today on Ridge Roamer, we're gonna replace this cheap plastic skid plate that came on my Tiger 900 with this awesome, heavy duty, rugged metal skid plate from Hepco and Becker. According to the instructions, we're gonna need a ratchet, a ratchet extension, standard set of sockets, Allen or hex, and Torx. So don't know exactly what size is yet, they don't specify. So I gathered my tools together. We'll go ahead now and get started. To get the stock skid plate off, it looks like we need a three millimeter Allen on the side here, and then an eight millimeter uh, socket to get the rest of the bolts off. So not very big hardware, and I'm actually missing one before I even get started. So kind of glad we're addressing this. And there we go, it's off. So that three millimeter uh, hex was not required to get it off. That's just holding a couple pieces together um, on the, the skid plate itself. So now that's out of the way, we'll get started installing the Hepco and Becker. Now the Hepco and Becker does have a little bit more to it. You've got some, actually these three additional brackets here. Um, plus the skid plate and a bag full of hardware. Uh, it is gonna take a little bit of time. Just follow the instructions here, figure out exactly how everything goes together. But honestly, I'm much happier about this than what came on its stock. So it looks like that bracket right here has to come off as well. So we'll go ahead and pull that off. So to get this bracket off, it's actually gonna be a T40 Torx socket and a 12 millimeter uh, standard socket. First, it's calling for two M8 by 20 Allen screws and two washers. Now with the stock bracket removed, We'll install the bracket that came with the Hepco and Becker. So the next component that goes on is this little kind of U-shaped bracket. Uh, that uses the M6 by 18 millimeter, and since there's another hole that you have to go through, I changed up tools here, went with a T-handle, that way I can go through and screw that in um, through this other side. So that'll go on the other side, I'm going to go around there, get that installed. This fits right in this little notch here towards the back. Now the final bracket uses the remaining M6 by 25 with a washer. Those are gonna go then through the bracket and then there are little spacers here, at least one spacer, um, 
for one side and, and no spacer for the other. Um, so looks like one's an M6 by 30 and the other is an M6 by 25. Still gets the washer, but does not get the spacer. So this bracket goes right here on the edge, on the side. This would be the left side of the bike as you're looking forward. And again, the slightly shorter M6, the 25 millimeter. Still gets the flat washer. Doesn't need a bushing for a spacer. Now with those three brackets on, we have everything in place to securely mount the skid plate itself. Now most of the skid plate bolts are going to use these uh, flush mount, the recessed Allen. They're kind of short and then they've got the uh, dedicated washers here for them. But there is one that's longer and it's going to use the spacer as well. So we're going to do that one first. That actually goes right through the middle of the skid plate into this bolt right under here. And once we've got that in place, then the rest of them will easily go together. All these are, uh, use a five millimeter uh, hex wrench, so Allen wrench. So we'll go ahead and go through all those. So we're going to use this middle hole here, put the long one through, and put the spacer on, we'll hold it in place here, and it becomes very apparent which hole it goes in. It's a matter of getting that one started. leave it slightly loose. Now I'll grab the rest of these and put them in one at a time. I'm just going to leave them loose but make sure I can get each one of them started. Loosen this here. I'm a little trouble getting this one lined up, so by loosening that bracket, I can now get these started by hand. Now that everything is started, I'll go around and tighten them all. Now that they're all snugged, I'll go around and really tighten them. I remember a lot of these are going into aluminum so you don't want to take the chance of stripping them. So there's a 
certain finesse here of tightening without stripping them. And then you'll just want to come back periodically and check on them. Now, this cheap little plastic skid plate is gone. A solid, heavy duty metal skid plate is there in its place. Well, there's another episode in the books. Thank you for joining me today as we eliminated this cheap plastic skid plate that came on my Tiger 900 GT Pro and replaced it with this heavy duty metal skid plate from Hepco and Becker that will definitely protect the engine and the exhaust and the oil filter a whole lot better than this will and should serve me for years to come. Stay tuned for the next episode where we're going to continue this series, not only protecting the engine down here, but we'll be installing the Hepco and Becker engine guards and then the upper tank guards as well. Thanks for joining me. Hope you all have a great day.